Welcome and God bless. Thank you for joining us on our Victory Outreach Church of Tacoma podcast. On behalf of Pastor Eric and Sister Jessica, we want to thank you for tuning in. For more information on the church and upcoming events, please visit us at VOTacoma.org. We're going to get directly into the Word of God, and I'm glad that you are here. Uh, God has put a message in my heart And uh, I almost did a whole Facebook Live thing this morning. I was going to record myself and say, hey, this is Pastor Eric. Come out to church, amen. But I didn't do it. (laughs) Uh, But I'm glad that you're here because God has really put a message on my heart. And uh, all morning, uh, 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 you know, God has been confirming it through little things. How many know that we serve a God of confirmation? Like when you're truly seeking God, God will confirm to you the answers that you need. For example, uh, in a few moments, I'm going to tell you a story about uh, me and my children, uh, that, uh, about a game we used to play called hide and seek. Has anybody ever played hide and seek before? Amen. Amen. Well, I, this, this, you know, I, I, this week, I, I was going to preach on patience, but I think I'm going to preach that next week. But on Wednesday, the Lord really started ministering to me about seeking him. And uh, it's, it's interesting because little things, right? My, my, my son watches uh, YouTube on my phone. Any parents have kids that watch YouTube on their phone? Amen. And, uh, you know, one of his things popped up and it said, hide and seek. Amen. And I knew that, that, I knew that this morning that this was the message for the church. And uh, again, what I'm going to preach about in a few moments is how to develop a closer relationship with God. How many would love to get closer to the Lord? <laughs> Amen. That's what I'm going to be preaching on this morning. I'm going to ask you to open your Bibles with me to Exodus chapter 33. Exodus 33. And we're going to read verse number 7 through 11. Now the Bible says this. Now Moses used to take a tent and pitch it outside the camp some distance away. Someone say distance. Calling in the tent of meeting. Anyone inquiring of the Lord would go to the tent of meeting outside the camp. And whenever Moses went out to the tent, all the people rose and stood at the entrance of their tents, watching Moses until he entered into the tent. As Moses went into the tent, the pillar of cloud would come down and stay at the entrance while the Lord spoke with Moses. Whenever people saw the pillar of cloud standing at the entrance to the tent, they, w- they all stood and worshipped each at the entrance of their tent. The Lord would, would speak to Moses face to face as one speaking to a friend. Then Moses would return to the camp, but his young aide Joshua of Nun did not leave the tent. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. I ask that you would speak through me, minister through my life. I pray that you would let this word come out with clarity, simplicity, but I also pray, Father, for the effectiveness to break every bondage, to heal every heart. I ask, God, that you would give us a blueprint on how to get closer to you. I pray that you would sever through every distraction, distraction right now in the name of Jesus. I ask that you leave, and Father, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, do what you, do what only you can. I'm asking you to take control of my life. In Jesus' name, we all say, Amen. Amen. Well, this morning, I'm going to minister a word to you called hide and seek. Someone say hide and seek. seek. Um, You know, years ago, when my children were smaller, we'd play a little game called hide and seek. Now, the entire time we would play hide and seek, I would hide, and they would run around, and they would try to find me. Now, as a father, when you play hide and seek and your kids are little, I'm talking when Eli was two and Joey was four, what you do as a father, you hide just long enough before they get scared. Come on, somebody. Right? Any fathers in the house? So I would hide in my house and I would hear, Daddy, where are you? Daddy. And I'd hear the other one, Daddy, Daddy's outside. They'd open the door. He's not there. I'd hear their little feet. And I'm hiding in the closet. And then when, when I would hear, Daddy, wh- where are you? When I'd hear a little, when I'd hear a little fear, I-, I, would, I would voice out, here I am. Where, where is he? Where is he? Right? I would say, here I am. I would give them clues as to where I was at. Now, you see, playing hide and seek with your children is about creating the special moment of joy when they find you. See, my goal in playing hide and seek with my kids was not to frustrate them. My goal 
in playing hide and seek was hide long enough to create the anticipated time where they would finally find me, lock eyes onto me and say, Daddy, I found you. If you're a parent this morning, you know that's the greatest feeling in the world. You know, I found that following God is a lot like playing hide and seek. Because we serve a God that loves us. And we serve a God that the Bible tells us in the book of Proverbs 8, 17, I love those who love me and those who seek me diligently will find me. You know that God is a lot like a father in that he wants us to seek him and the Bible says that when we seek him we will find him is there anybody that wants to know God this morning God desires to reveal himself to us but he is waiting for us to seek him not just seek him when we need something yeah anybody got friends like that that they only call when they need somebody come on somebody you look at the caller ID you're like come on man you must need something Come on, don't look at me like that. I know who I'm talking to, amen? Right? God wants us to seek him, not only when we need something, but God wants to have a relationship with us. Someone say relationship. This morning, I want to speak to you about seeking God and developing a personal relationship with the Lord. Because God is not just a myth that we talk about. See, there's some people that they know God exists, but they don't know God in a personal way. Like we know God because of our auntie, our uncle, for some of us it may be our parents, but God wants you to know him for yourself. Are you hearing me this morning? When you look at the scripture we opened up with, we read of a time where the Israelite people were traveling on a new journey. If you read the beginning of Exodus chapter 33, at the beginning of the chapter, God tells the people, he says, leave this place, you and the people you brought up out of Egypt, and go up to the land, I promise, as an oath to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, saying, I will give you as your descendants. So here we have the people of God. They were camped at one place, and God said, it's time to get up and go to the next place. So in other words, God was sending them on a new journey. How many know truth? Getting to know God is like a journey. There are some of you, you're at a place in life you've never been, you've never been in this season before. Some of you are experiencing new things in your life right now. And God desires to reveal himself to you in your situation. Now again, when we look at the Bible, the Bible tells us that everywhere Moses went, he traveled, he would take this tent and he would set it up outside. And this tent that he brought with him was called the tabernacle of meeting or the tent of meeting. Someone say tent. Now the word tabernacle simply means tent or dwelling place. And this tent wasn't just any ordinary tent. As a matter of fact, the tent looked a lot like what you see there on the screen. Whenever they would travel, if they would travel a day, what they would do, see how the people's houses would be set up around. But the Bible tells us that a distance away from the tent, he would set up this tent called the tent of meeting. Now this tent wasn't just your ordinary tent. This tent was a place where he connected with God. This tent was a place where he would seek God's face for direction, not only for his life and his family, but for all the people that were following him. Are you hearing me this morning? Now, I want to talk to you. I love it. I, I, I want to talk to you about this tent of meeting. And I want to share some things with you and some insights about the tent of meeting that I believe will help you develop a closer relationship with God. Are you with me? The first thing you have to know about this tent, number one, the tent of meeting was a place of separation. Someone say separation. Exodus 33, 7 says, Moses took his tent and pitched it outside the camp, far from the camp, and called it the tabernacle of meeting. If you read it in the New Living Translation, it says it like this. It says, it was Moses' practice to take the tent of meeting and set it up some distance from the camp. I don't know about you, but, but every now and then, I feel like I need to distance myself from everybody and their mamas. Come on, somebody. Right? Who gets irritated with people after you've been with them for a while? Somebody be honest. There are some people, they're the most patient people in the world. 
They love people. But I know, I, I know people that they don't like people. Come on, somebody. But as believers, how many know we got to push towards building relationships and practicing patience? Amen. But the Bible says that it was Moses' practice to take the tent of meeting and set it up some distance away from the camp. Now that word distance means this, to extend space between two things. It's the state of being set apart. Now the tent of meeting, listen to me, it was set up outside the camp for a reason. Because the tent was a place where Moses would separate himself from everything and everyone to hear from God. And I think this is something that we as God's people in this day and this age, we need to practice. We need to make it our practice to separate ourselves from all the distractions of life. For some this morning, we need to separate ourselves from our routine that we're stuck in. What do they say the definition of insanity is? Doing the same thing, say it with me, over and over and expecting a different result. There are some people that they never change the way they live their life and they're on a, such a tight routine. It's the routine that brings stress into their life. They think it works, but it doesn't work. What's happening is they're maintaining the order they've created. Are you hearing me? The tent of meeting was set outside the camp for a reason. Listen to me, church. In order to develop a personal relationship with God, you and I will have to develop the habit of separating ourselves to spend time with God through prayer. We live in a time where everything is fighting for our attention. Today, people are so busy with specific agendas and routines that sometimes they leave God out of the routine and these people even show up to church. Listen, Sunday isn't enough. Sunday, if, you're, if you are relying on Sunday morning to give you enough fuel to get through the week, I got, I, I got to tell you, you are sadly mistaken because what will happen is you're going to get put up against the wall at some point and you're going to have to go after God. Right? We are going to have to learn to separate ourselves to follow the Lord. See, the truth about building a relationship with God, it takes work. It takes sacrifice. It takes time. Are you hearing me? I'm talking about setting time out of your day to pray on a regular basis. Right? If you're close to me, and, and if, when people tell me, pastor, work with me, pastor, pastor disciple me, one of the things you know that I'll, I'll constantly, I'll ask, hey, how is your prayer life? Have you been praying? Right? We need to get to the place where we learn people not to depend on us. See, some of us are good at giving advice, right? But what I want to teach you to do is not only ask for counsel, but I want to teach you to go to the throne room of God. I want to teach you to get on your knees. When you don't know what to do, before you pick up the phone, the best thing that you can do is get on your knees and ask God, God, will you help me with this problem? Leviticus eleven forty four 44 says, For I am the Lord your God. You shall therefore sanctify. Someone say sanctify. Sanctify yourself and you shall be holy for I am holy. Now the word sanctify is similar to the word holy because it also means to be set apart. In the Hebrew the word sanctify is a word called kadash meaning holy, set apart, consecrated or dedicated. In order to develop a relationship with God we're going to learn, we're going to have to learn to separate ourselves onto God. The Bible says in Leviticus 20, 26 and ye shall be holy unto me, for I the Lord am holy. I have served you, for I have s s severed you from other people that you shall be mine. Again, if we are going to develop a relationship with God, we're going to learn, we have to learn to separate ourselves, right? Drown out all the noise to spend time with God. So this tent wasn't an ordinary tent. It was a place where Moses would separate himself to grab a hold of God and find direction not only for his family, but for the people. The second thing you have to know about the tent of meeting, the tent of meeting was a place where people would inquire of God. Someone say inquire. The Bible tells us anyone inquiring of the Lord 
would go to the tent of meeting outside the camp. Now let me, let me explain what this word inquire means. It means to seek information by asking questions. To make investigation. Examine, seek out, or to search out. What you have to understand about God is that, listen, God welcomes our questions. He welcomes inquiry. God welcomes you asking, right? But hear me. We can't lose reverence for God. There's some people that they ask questions and they get chesty with God. You ever had somebody get chesty with you? Yeah. Right? What? 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 Who, who you think you're talking? Right? Sometimes we're like that with God. God, why is this happening to me? Why me? Why does this always happen to me? And we're mad at God. And it's amazing to me because when we talk to a man like that, that has all the power in the world, right? And we get to this place of pride where we think God owes us something. Listen to me, church. God doesn't owe you anything. He gave you everything when he sent his son to die on the cross for you. What more do we need? Are you hearing me this morning? See, what I want to do is challenge your perspective this morning when it comes to getting closer to God because I think the problem is not that people aren't praying. I think that people aren't inquiring of God. Seeking God with the intention of wanting to know his plan and his... See, the problem is we seek God, but we normally seek God for our agenda. I'm guilty. But the key to getting close to God is seeking God for his agenda for my life. Because the Bible says that his ways are higher than my thoughts. His ways are far greater than anything I could ever imagine. Listen, church, we got to learn to inquire from God his plans for our lives and for you know I was doing that this week this week something's been happening to me and and, and I feel like that that stirring of prayer again and I was this week I was not only praying but church I was praying for some of you you know what my prayer was my prayer wasn't that God would pull you out of your problems for some of you I ain't gonna lie I was like God keep them in the problem God could you shake them a little bit I'm serious I was praying that some of you go into problems. Some of you are looking at me like I'm crazy. <laughs> some of you need problems, amen? <laughs> let, me, let me explain to you why. Listen, peace is not found in the absence of problems. Peace is found in the presence of God. See, I don't want God to rescue you from your problems because you need problems to grow. You need problems in your life to figure out who you really are. Because when my back is against the wall and I don't know what to do, I realize I don't have it all together. I realize, man, I'm kind of prideful. Man, you're the pastor and you think like that? Man, you're having crazy thoughts and you think like that? Listen, every now and then we need a reality check that we're not as holy as we think we are. That we're not far along as we think we are. That we got to get back to the place where we see God is far greater. God is far, far. He, he has a better plan than I have for me and my family. I said that to say that this week when I was praying for my children, I wasn't praying prayers like God keep them safe. I was praying and I was inquiring, God, what do you have for Jesus? Gianna's life. God, help me. Help me. Help me influence her life. What do you have for Joey? What do you have for Elijah? God, would you give me a glimpse of what you're going to use him to do so that I can live and be the best father I could be right now so that I can help guide and push him towards his purpose that you have for his life. See, one of the things I don't do is I don't push agendas on my kid. I don't make them do things they don't want to do. Now, they got to do things that I need them to do. Right? But you got parents that live through their kids. Right? For example, like I love football. Joey plays football. Joey breathes football. Joey watches football. Eli just actually, he had his first game yesterday. He played for the first time yesterday. Amen. <laughs> But for the last three years, I've been saying, baby, do you want to play football? I mean, that's a big boy. He's bigger than Joey. And he's like, no, I don't like football. No. I was like, come on. I mean, he knows the three. He knows down, set, hike. And all the time they go, no, I don't want to play. So I ain't going to lie. You know what? God's just ministering to me right now. <laughs> Maybe it was because I was praying. Because I was like, God, right? for three years he told me he didn't want to pray. All of a sudden this week, he says, daddy, I want to play. I was 
I was like, what did you say? Right? All excited. I went to my wife. Honey, he wants to play. And Joey's egging him on. Yeah, we can get you gear. We can get you gear. And he's like, I'll play. But see, I didn't push the agenda on him. Because had I pushed it on him two years ago, he probably wouldn't have liked it today. Are you hearing me? See, when it comes to our children, we can't live in fear. We, 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 can't, we can't try to create a scenario that's going to save them from the realities of life. Sometimes we, we, we try, we, we, we're so guarded with our kids. Listen to me. We need to teach them how to rely on the Lord because problems are going to face. Listen, the day and age that they are living in today, what we need to do is not try to take them out of problems. We need to teach them to get into the presence of God so that when they experience problems, they know who their strength is. Sometimes we go through struggles and we don't know why. Let me tell you why. Maybe, just maybe we're going through problems because we're not inquiring of God enough. Right? Like I'm stubborn. Where are my stubborn folk out? Somebody, somebody wave at me. Their more hands should be up. I know who's in this church. I'm acting all humble in the church. Right? I'm stubborn. I'm the guy that I buy things and I never look at the manual. I try to put it together. Now, I'm not the most handy man in the world, but I can figure some things out. I, I consider myself to be kind of smart. One time I put a chair together, and my wife was like, after it was all done, she said, well, what is that part doing there? And I forgot the part. And I said, I don't know, but it works. Right? I think the chair was supposed to spin, but that bad boy didn't spin, amen? I think I got frustrated and drilled it, amen? Right? Some of us are like that in life, right? Like, like, like you guys got, how many people got cell phones? Right? How many have you ever read the manual? There are things that your phone can do that you might not be aware of. Right? Like I was pumped the other day. Like we lost the remote in the back room. And my wife was having a Bible study. I'm stuck with like, like a bunch of kids back there. I'm like, God, I need, I need football right now, right? Monday nights. And I'm sitting there and I can't find the remote. Right? So then I Googled. Is there a way I can get a remote? So I found an app, right? And I was able to change the channels, but I didn't know that, right? What am I trying to tell you? There are things that your phone can do, but you don't know because you never read the manual, right? How many of you right now, I've heard this before and I love this analogy, you have something in your house blinking on 12. A microwave, an alarm clock, the stove, it's blinking on 12, amen? You never, you never figured out how to set the time. Why? Why? Because you never read the manual. Right? See, there are some of you right now, your life spiritually is blinking on 12 and God says, I've given you the manual. The answer to your problem is not far from you. The answer to your problem is in the Bible. And all you have to do is this word called inquire. Say it with me. Inquire. In other words, you got to ask God. See, some of you, the problem is, and the reason you're still in struggle and you haven't found the answer is because you haven't inquired of God. We're spinning our wheels, running in circles, still battling the same battles, but we've never asked God. Like, like listen, you got to ask God sometimes. Like, I asked God this week, and I ain't going to tell you what he told me, but I was sitting there, I was like, God, you know, I, I'm acting holy. Is there anything in me, God, that you don't approve of? God, is there anything inside of me that you don't like? And I'm sitting there and I'm praying. I'm feeling good. 30 seconds later, I started feeling horrible. He started showing me, Eric, you still got pride in you. Eric, if you're not careful, you can fall. You think you know the plan that I have for you, but you're not following. Come on, somebody. Are you hearing me? God has a plan. And it's our job to inquire. Moving along, I'll get through this. What is interesting about this tent and what the Bible tells us, catch this, the Bible says these words, anyone inquiring of the Lord could go into the tent. The Bible says anyone that wanted to inquire of God could go into the tent. But watch this. The Bible tells us that only Moses went into the tent and only Joshua, his servant, followed him. 
See, every time the presence of God would fall, people, the Bible says, would stand at the post of their door tent. In other words, they were spectators and not participators. Now catch this. In those days, when the presence of God would fall, there would be a pillar of fire and a, and a, and a cloud. And people knew that was the presence of God. But instead of going to the presence, they stood at the doorpost of their tent looking like, hey, what's going on over there? You know, it sounds a lot like what sometimes church looks like spiritually. God is here. God is doing a work. But instead of participating in worship, we're like doing our due diligence because we showed up. Are you hearing me this morning? Is this making sense? The people, listen to me, they had the opportunity to inquire God for themselves. But this was the problem. They were intrigued by God's presence. They were intrigued by the pillar of fire. They were intrigued by the cloud. But they never moved past the entrance of their own tent. In other words, they never moved past their comfort zone. One commentator wrote this, and I love it. He says that they, the people watched Moses and the cloudy pillar, which symbolized God's presence. They were intrigued by the presence of God. They bowed down, but they remained at the entrance of their tents. Just as people can be intrigued with the idea of a spiritual life. They read books about spiritual life, dialogue and write and journal. They even put posts on Facebook and scriptures about how spiritual they are. However, they still do not budge from the entrance of their own tent. Such were the Israelites' people. There are some people, they're intrigued by the idea of a relationship with God. But they never move past their comfort zone. Listen, it might feel uncomfortable when you get on your knees and you're praying to someone you cannot see. It sometimes feel weird, feels weird to trust him in a situation that seems like if you do not move and make an effort, your world is going to fall apart. For some of us, that's the problem. We need to learn to stand still. The Bible says, be still and know that I am the Lord. See, we got to stop trying to Mickey Mouse and come up with solutions for problems that have been life lasting. Are you hearing me? People were intrigued with the idea of being spiritual, yet they never moved beyond the comfort. This morning... If you want to know God, you might have to do something you've never done before. God wants you to know him. He desires to reveal himself to you, but it's not enough to be intrigued. Are you hearing me? It's not enough to come to church one time a week. You have to seek him at home. Jeremiah 29, 12, 14, you know the scripture. Then you will call upon me and pray to me and I will listen to you. But first, in order for him to listen to us, we got to pray. Are you hearing me? And you will seek me and find me. And when you search for me with all your heart, I will be found by you, says the Lord. First Chronicles 16, 11, New Living Translation says, search for the Lord and for his strength, continually seek him. See, it's those that seek the Lord that know the Lord. Are you hearing me? The tent of meeting provided a place where people could spend time with God. It was a place where they could inquire of God. Listen, church, some of you are in places you've never been to before. Like I'm in a season I've never been to in my life. I got a brand new baby girl. I've never been here before, right? My kids are growing up. I'm having to change the way that I parent because of the things that influence my children now, right? I'm having to find parental controls on the TV because some of the things they watch, oblivious, they're oblivious to some of the things they watch, right? And I've been guilty. They're watching something on YouTube and all of a sudden they hear a cuss word. What in the world? We don't cuss in my house. Right? But we got to train our children. We got to watch for those things. Because if we're not careful, listen to me, the world will influence your kids and take them down a road you may not be able to bring them back from unless they know God. The tent of meeting, the third thing and the last thing, when it comes to the tent of meeting, the tent was a place where God's presence would manifest. Someone say manifest. In other words, it was a place where the people could experience the presence of God. And this is where I'm going to be closing. Exodus 33, 9 says, And Moses went into the tent, and the pillar of cloud would come down and stay at the entrance while the Lord spoke with Moses. The pillar of the cloud was symbolic of God's presence, and it was in the tabernacle, listen to me, where God would speak to Moses. See, Moses was the mediator for all of the people during that time. 
Because of sin, God chose a prophet, a man, to stand in the gap between him and his people. Follow me. This is the most important point. In other words, God would speak to his people through Moses because of sin. Prior to Jesus' death on the cross, only a select few had access to the presence of God. But this is the blessed hope. After Jesus died on the cross, he became our mediator. He became the bridge between us and heaven. He became the entrance. Listen to me. Imagine that for a second. Before Jesus, you had to rely on somebody else to get a word from God. And only a select few could experience the presence of God. But when Jesus came from heaven to earth and died on the cross, the Bible tells us that the curtain split. In other words, that was symbolic that we have an entryway into the presence of God. You don't have to wait to experience the presence of God here on Sunday. But you can find a place in your house, listen to me, and when chaos is looming, listen, some of you need to find, some of you need to clear that closet that you know you throw everything into. And you need to, you need to be able to go in there with your phone, turn on some music, and just pray and call out to God, because truth be told, we're dying inside. I know what it's like to be in a room like this, full of people, and feel all alone. I know what it's like to, to be the leader and act like everything is okay, but everything inside feels like it's caving in. Somebody work with me. Are you, have you been there? But I've learned something, that when I don't know what to do, the best place that I can go is to hit my knees and start inquiring, God, what are you doing in my life? God, would you give me direction? Are you hearing me? Hebrews 10, 19, 22 Dear brothers and sisters, and this is a reminder for some of you, we can boldly enter into hell, heaven's most holy place because of the blood of Jesus. By his death, Jesus opened a new and life-giving way through the curtain into the most holy place. And since we have a great high priest who rules over God's house, let us go right into the presence of God with sincere hearts, fully trusting him. For our guilty conscience has been sprinkled with Christ's blood. See, what happens is there's some people that they want a relationship with God, but because of their guilty conscience their guilty conscience keeps them from praying if that's you this morning if you feel who's ever been there where you feel ashamed you're like God don't want to listen to me or like I, I, I want to pray but God don't want nothing to do with me who's ever been there well this is for you it says for our guilty conscience have been sprinkled with Christ's blood to make us clean I don't know what you did yesterday I don't know what you did before you walked in here all I can tell you it's the blood of Jesus that can not only heal your heart but that can make a way where there seems to be no way it's the blood of Jesus that can listen restore relationships and give you hope you don't gotta live in guilt you don't have to walk in shame. Jesus paid the ultimate price so that you and I can live in freedom. The Bible says Moses would enter into the presence of God. And as a result, the Lord would speak to Moses. The Bible says, listen to me, face to face as one speaks to a friend. See, the, in the Old Testament, friendships with God was a privilege. Listen, but how many know today, we are friends of God. Jesus was the ultimate sacrifice. John 15, 15, listen, and I end here. No longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know his master's doing, but I have called you friends. Jesus called his disciples friend, and by extension, all of the followers who have a relationship with Jesus are friends of God. You can enter into God's presence. In closing scripture, Deuteronomy 4, 7. And this is a reminder. What other nation is so great as to have their God near them the way the Lord our God is near to us whenever we pray to Him? What other nation has a God as near to them as the Lord our God is near to us Whenever we, see, in other words, there's a lot of gods out there. 
You notice the little G. Come on, somebody say little G. That may be people's gods, but there's only one God. Are you hearing me? This morning, if you want a relationship with God, there's three simple things you have to do. Number one, separate yourself. Number two, you have to learn to seek God through inquiry. Another, you, you got to ask questions. In other words, you got to pray. And thirdly, if you want a relationship with God, you have to learn to enjoy the presence of God. That's why like when worship happens, it's a privilege to enter in. This morning with every head bowed and every eye closed, I'm going to ask you to stand with me this morning. With every head bowed and every eye closed.